Okay. You can all hear me fine if I, okay, because I'm so tall I always have to do that. Um, this has been really interesting. Um, I, I love the way the public partner, public private partnerships are working in this community. Um, and you know the way that you're doing this. And uh, I, I see and feel the excitement around it. And I think you're treating the artists very well. And we appreciate that. Um, I want to start out by sharing a little bit about my, uh, my home and my practice. Uh, this is the back of my house in Venice. We have a very large lot. Um, my wife's an architect, and we did this renovation together. This is the wall between my kitchen and my living room, and I'm showing you this because this is what I do. I come to a place, and I work between the functions and activities of the place and touch it in the right way. And in this case, I wanted to divide the kitchen from the living room in this big space, but I still wanted to see through it. Um, so this is the uh, studio. So if you look at the back of the house, you see the studio. And I always wanted an arbor with wisteria. And this, this wisteria grew really fast. And the granite fountain is mine, and the, I designed the chairs and tables. So, you know, I, everything that I do, I, I'm very thoughtful about, especially in reference to my home. And this is my commute, 50 feet which was essential living in LA. I said to my wife, if you wanna stay in LA, I'm gonna work at home. Um, and this is the back of the studio. It has alley access so we can get big things in and out of it. But what we normally do in the studio is a lot of mock-ups and um, the studio, I'll just show you as, fa the uh, sculptures as, I, as I'll show you, is fabricated elsewhere. Um, and I also have a practice with doing, you know, painting, small-scale studio art, but the, the public sculpture is fabricated in Salt Lake, and this is a metal arts foundry. Uh, the owner is a friend. He's fabricated my work for 20 years, and so this is kind of my other studio, and I go here at least once a month, sometimes for extended periods to work on things. Um, and this is a big bronze that I'm wrestling around on a forklift. Um, you know, I thought about, um, you know, the idea of art and healing environments, something I've thought about a lot. And I, I wanted to go way back 20 years ago when I did this um, piece, the, new, the Gardens, New Environments for Healing at Memorial Sloan Kettering in Manhattan. This is the Lawrence Rockefeller Outpatient Pavilion um, off 54th Street, across from Citibank. Uh, and the client came to me and said, um, you know, can you help us do this? Because we're developing this very kind of intimate spaces for healing for people who are coming in and out for outpatient treatment. And I said, sounds really interesting. When do you need the piece? Nine months. <laughs> so all the work you see here was done in nine months. So I designed the entire lobby, uh, the entry experience. Uh, Mr. Rockefeller has a collection of Asian art, so some of that, as you see here from a Chinese uh, scroll painting, was incorporated into the work. And you, that is a waterfall behind that laser-cut bronze. So um, all of the, this is the entry off 54th Street. All of this um, was designed by my studio, the lighting, the architecture, seating, everything. Uh, and then as you go up to the treatment areas, as you get, this is what you see when you get off the elevator and you check in and then you go around and you can see the art through this, uh, you know, the first thing you see when you get off. And then there are these little areas where they have a little living room, there's a little kitchenette, there's magazine stands because people are coming back again and again to this facility with their family and their spouse or their significant other to, to receive care. So it's like create, creating a little community. Um, and there's this laser cut bronze, behind it was different colors of stained glass. Um, some of them had, a lot of them had plants. Uh, this is a wall of orchids, which they change out every month. Um, this is the Persian garden. These, each of these is on a different treatment floor, which is, you know, a different level of care, different um, physical function. Uh, and there's, a, there's a, a, a pool of water there, which has a mosaic in it. 
uh, this is from a, um, a Japanese print of Iris, and there's quotations of poetry that are combined with the work. But, you know, the idea is, uh, like has been alluded to here um, by Chuck, that, you know, art is, is really can be part of healing. It should be part of healing. Uh, people heal better in an environment where there's beauty and something to look at, and the sound of the water is always in the background. Um, so, jump to your site. Uh, you know, when I got up uh, on the fourth floor and looked down, that was really interesting because it was a whole different perspective given of the site, and I want to talk about that a little bit later. I think the other thing is that this is the welcome entrance to uh, this part of, of Cone Health. And this, I think, you can see here, you're going up and you'll see the sculpture, you know, rise out of the ground. And there's this opportunity to terrace that and make the landscape part of the experience of the arrival in a very thoughtful way so that um, it works with the art itself. Um, the other thing is, I think people are going to want to go out there uh, and be in front of this sculpture. It's probably a photo op, and I don't think people will go out there every day, but I think people will go out there on special events. I mean, I heard about the, the George Floyd memorial that you did in that circle, and so, you know, I think it's worth discussion. You put a curb cut in there, and since it's monitored 24-7, um, you know, it may be a possibility. I'm not saying that has to happen, but something to think about, and I think you want to really think about this in a very careful and considered way. Now, I'm not going to show you a lot of projects today of the over 100 public art projects I've done. It's, I want to show you everything, but it's kind of difficult. I'm just going to show you some things that might have a bearing on this, um, some memorials and especially some hospital work. Um, this is the I Am Man Plaza in um, Memphis, Tennessee. And it's a National Civil Rights Memorial for the sanitation workers' strike. It was part of the MLK 50 celebration in Memphis. And most of you know, I've seen these photos of the sanitation workers striking, carrying this placard, I am a man. Um, the idea was the church on the left, Claiborne Temple, was supposed to be joined to this site. So everything I did was about thinking that that temple would be restored and rejoining it. And here the sanitation workers are about to partake in one of their marches, uh, which all started at this temple. So these marches started on this site. And so I'm, this is the entry to the temple and... Um, the sculpture in front of it. Now, what I do um, in many instances is I work with landscape and sculpture together, and this is a place. And the I Am A Man sculpture is the iconic presence in the center, but I design the entire uh, plaza as a landscape sculpture. So these uh, marble gates, which are digitally carved, open, and they, they face the city, and you walk in to the space through there. The gates have quotations from Dr. King and Strikers. And the way that we uh, came up with this text was to have four community workshops throughout Memphis held with uh, through um, uh, Urban Arts of Memphis. And I engaged... Um, spoken word artists and rap artists in Memphis. This is Steve Fox performing at one of the community meetings to work with me. And over the course of about four months, they created a text, which Steve was the main author, but then they took it to the community and we called it the community text. And this woman um, is touching it here. It's uh, really a meditation on where have we come with social justice since King's death. Um, this is uh, people sitting on the gates, and um, you see this black granite ring that goes around the site. Um, it is the white inscriptions are a timeline of the strike. So there is this didactic quality that this has, a lot of my work has that, uh, that educates people to, uh, to this event. Um, and uh, that black granite ring in this, can you see the cursor? No? Okay. Well, there's a dedicatory wall as part of that uh, with the 3,000 names of the strikers. They sprung us on, that on us. We thought there would be about 500 names and 
<laughs> we had to redesign midway in the project. Um, but, you know, that kind of place that is a connection to its own history um, and being able to connect the entry to the temple to this. Now, the temple is now under restoration. There's a foundation that's doing the whole thing, Claiborne. It was Claiborne Reborn. Um, and this is the I Am A Man sculpture. It's bronze on one side, and it's backed with a stainless steel that says I Am A Man on the opposite side. Um, and this stainless steel side is poly mirror polished. So um, the text which is etched into this is King's last speech that he gave in Memphis the night before his assassination. I've been to the mountaintop. So you go up to this and you read Dr. King's words and you see your reflection in that text. So that's a very powerful moment in this uh, memorial. And uh, at night, it's, since it's cut through, it's illuminated from the inside and it glows like a, a beacon of justice. Um, at a time when we're tearing down uh, hierarchical memorials throughout the South, I think it's not just important to tear these things down, it's really important to understand what we're gonna replace them with. And I want a space and a place which is monumental, but which is approachable, which is horizontal and not uh, something that you have to look up at, but that meets you on your own terms. And this is such a place. Um, here it is, an uh, entry at night. And here we are at the opening with the mayor. Reverend Lawson in the center there in the overcoat was brought King to Memphis to support the strike. And um, the men with the medals and a few others are the strikers. So this was a, you know, a, <clears throat> a really big day for them. And this is possibly the highest compliment that my work in public could get being used. This is two days after George Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis. I had no idea that people, you know, would do this, um, but I designed it for this kind of activity, a peaceful protest. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, this, is, this, this type of public engagement is something that I'm really interested in through the spaces that I make, and it isn't just after the pieces are there, it's during the discussion of the making of the piece. This is a piece called Receptor at uh, Patriot Ridge in Springfield, Virginia. It's adjacent to the National Geospatial Institute, which uh, is a federal government agency that um, tracks things with satellites. They could read a Coke can in Saudi Arabia. Um, and so it was this idea of looking down on this topography from you know outer space back onto Earth. And the sculpture is the center of this, and it's this mashup of these satellite dish type forms uh, as a centerpiece. And notice that, again, the sculpture, its movements, its forms are all part of the movement of the landscape. They're one thing. Um, and I think that you, know, you need to think about doing that when you do this piece at the hospital. The sculpture's illuminated at night. All my things are illuminated, some with color. Um, and then this is uh, what happens at night. And, you know, I showed this because I was thinking of this, that, you know, wouldn't it be cool that in the winter when it's dark and people are still at work that they could look down on something um, from above that was illuminated like that and that it actually, you know, was part of the sculpture. I think that'd be really exciting. Another hospital, um, Zuckerberg General Hospital and Trauma Center in uh, San Francisco, uh, large, largely funded by Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan Foundation. These are the sculptures I did for the center median. You can see the, the island is graded, so there's a kind of a landscape thing going on there. Um, here we are installing the sculptures. Um, these sculptures, are made to catch light, they're vessels. And so when the light is low in the morning or the afternoon, they kind of appear gold like this, but when the light is higher, they're silver. So there's this something that's happening with them during the day as the light changes. 
Um, but then at night, they are illuminated with color-changing LED lights, which are controlled with a motion sensor on a DMX control, so that as cars circumnavigate the drop-off area, which is the same situation you have here, uh, the sculptures change color. So they're interactive in that sense that, um, you know, it's the motion of arrival and departure which sets off these varying light shows. And um, the sculptures are eight, there are eight sculptures. The, ma the tallest is about 21 feet and um, they're on this uh, pad. So as you move around them, you know, your perspective of the pieces change and at night the colors change so that you get this uh, light show, um, which is really triggered by your own actions. So I'm interested in how the public, you know, will interact with a piece that you're going to build out there. Um, and there are a lot of ways that that can be done. This is another hospital. Um, it's the uh, Mark Ridley Thomas Behavioral Health Center in uh, the Willowbrook section of Los Angeles, um, which is near Compton. So these are underserved communities. What they did was they combined uh, the parole offices and drug treatment um, and mental health treatment into one facility. Uh, and so it's a renovation, it's adaptive reuse of a 1980s building that had these big center stairway, there uh, columns, they were, there were these reliefs in the building. So I was able to use those to create these pieces. Now, the, the sculptures can change like in series, each, each of the three columns back and forth, they change individually. There, there's all kinds of light programs that, that happen in the programming of the pieces. But the story about Willowbrook was people settled there, the, the, the great ranchos that the Spanish established because of the water. And there was water there until the 50s when uh, you know, they covered the, the Willow Brook. But I worked with um, a poet and a community activist in the Willow Brook neighborhood to create a text about what the hospital was to the community. Uh, one of them had been born there and the other had, you know, used the hospital her, you know, her whole life. So there was this immediate connection between them and the place. And um, the text that we put in the center um, uh, was in, in the center column of the three columns. It's in Tongva, which is the native tongue of um, that area, uh, Spanish and English. You can see the English text here. So we were really addressing a community when we did this, and there was a, a really strong bit of community engagement. So... Um, you know, I find that talking to the community before I begin the work is one of the most important things about the work um, because it, in, it, it really enriches its content. This is the center column, and I'll just show you, you know, this is the way the lights change. They change very slowly, though, um, so you don't even know that the colors are changing. Uh, and then the north and the south column on either side of that entry column also have text, but... They're also very beautiful in the day, the way the, um, the textures of the stainless steel work. And when I work with LED, one of the most beautiful moments is when at sunset or sunrise, when the LED mixes with sunlight. And so you get this just absolutely thing that looks like it's on fire in a way that you can't get with LED because it's, it's also being influenced by the sun. Um, so these are programmed to work, you know, individually or together, but they're also programmed to work on like um, days, special, you know, days that the hospital wants to, you know, celebrate or, you know, the, we have a sports team um, program where, you know, they change colors of the sports teams in L.A., uh, so a lot of thought goes into, you know, how the work is going to serve the community and, you know, then how the community will respond to the work. If people are part of making something, it, it really makes the piece better for me and it makes the piece better for the community. So this is just, I'm just going to go through um, these colors changing on this one column. So you get an idea of the way the light show works. Um, 
another hospital project for the Kaiser Permanente Mission Bay Medical Offices in San Francisco. They said, we want something that everybody can relate to. We want something that's fun and especially something for children. And I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> maybe you got the wrong artist. Um, but I, I found out that this was one of the flyways for the monarch butterfly going down to Mexico. And um, this is the monarch butterfly on these pine trees where they mate. Um, and it, it's just this incredible monolithic, it's like a sculpture. And so I thought, well, what if I made a column of all of these butterflies, hundreds of butterflies that were tabbed together uh, as this monarch? Um, and so the real fun thing is when it's illuminated at night because it, uh, it, it, it changes color and it takes these colors in, you know, really a modeled and shadowed rich and remarkable way. Um, I was really happy about the way that the light, um, the way the piece took the light. You can see in these close-ups, you get a much better idea of that. So things that look one way during the day when they interact with sunlight and another way um, at night uh, is a real important part of the way that I make sculpture. This is a piece at the waterfront in Juneau, Alaska. It's called the Quellians, which is a mashup of the Latin for eagle and whale, uh, two of the real prominent characters in the Alaskan landscape. Juneau is Alaska's capital. And um, as you might know, there are a lot of cruise ships that go through there. And this, um, this dock, which is the one on the far side there, was the new dock, and that was the money that funded this project. Because when the cruise ships came in, it was congesting this, uh, this walkway, and the community couldn't use it, and so they moved the, the, the dock out by 300 feet. And so now the community has regained uh, this walkway, and it's marked in a really interesting way. And at night, it has this uh, these sculptures transform through changing color. So, you know, the, I, the, there was a lot of discussion of giving this to uh, a Native American artist, like a Klingit artist, and they chose this, and they're very happy with it because, you know, and this is the highest compliment my work could get. It, it feels like it belongs there, and that's everything I make. I want it to feel like it belongs in its place. So there's these great reflections in the water at night as these things change color. And this is, it was late, so I didn't see this place in full operation when I took the photos, but this is the size of these steam, uh, these uh, cruise boats, which are, you know, the lifeblood of this community's economy. So not only did they regain a new seawalk, which the community loves and uses now, but um, they made this incredible welcome uh, to uh, Juno for the rest of the world that comes on these cruise ships. And they were terrific to work with. It, it, of note, the, 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 the thing that this is standing on used to be the thing, that's a sculpture pedestal, used to, is the thing they used to tie the ships up on. So we you know, appropriated this old nautical structure as the sculpture pedestal, which I just thought was great. Um, and so, you know, it, it's really a different place because it's transformed by the sculpture. This is a piece called Verga um, at the Oklahoma State Fair. It was just finished uh, last year. And it's these two cloud-like uh, sculptures which are made of uh, aluminum rod that are digitally drawn, but then they have to all be hand-formed. Took about a year of forming to do this. Um, and it's about, the whole piece is about 150 feet long. It's two parts, and you walk into the facility there from the left under them. Um, and they, you know, it's this idea of conflating uh, the Oklahoma River with these big clouds that they have in Oklahoma that are real wispy called uh, Virga. And it's also illuminated with LED light. So working with a place, working with a community in a place, and 
making art that comes out of that experience is, is really the way that I like to work. This is a piece in Cerritos at their sculpture garden. It's called Infinity. Um, and they, they wanted something that, you know, would sort of attract people at the entry. So we used the entry they had and framed the piece up with that. And it also is uh, illuminated with LED at night. Um, this is probably, I'm almost out of time, right? I am out of time? All right. This is the last piece. This was um, the inter what used to be the Interdisciplinary Research Center at um, the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, they do cancer research there, and this hospital is adjacent to the children, not research facility is adjacent to the children's hospital. And the piece goes through like five stories of this uh, atrium in this research facility. And you can see it here from the outside. There are three columns. These columns came from talking to the researchers and finding this image, which is a myosin heavy chain, which is protein in a muscle. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be amazing if we could hang these columns like through the atrium from the top to the bottom? So these are the technical drawings. That's, that's what we did. Um, and uh, the, so you can see the collaborative workspace to the right. And um, you know they fill with light in the day when, you, when you're under them. There's these aluminum plates that are all um, hung on cable. And so it looks like the piece hangs through the entire building. And again, it also, this is looking up at it at night. It's illuminated with LED at night. Okay, now if you have any questions, I'd be happy to talk to you.